couple of months back, I did a video on the atomic firebox, and somebody asked the question, does it work with acoustic IRs or impulse responses? The short answer is yes, and this is a video on that. I'm going to play you a quick acoustic jam in which I used IR. I'm also blending it with the undersaddle pickup, which is quite an important element here. Um, I'm going to show you how I've got that set up, how I've recorded it. I'll also solo it outside of the mix so you can hear the difference between the impulse response and the undersaddle pickup straight into the interface. This concept is somewhat similar to the Fishman Aura system and their uh, acoustic imaging pedals. Um, it's not the same. Their technology is proprietary and won't work with the Atomic. Uh, it won't work with a standard IR loader. There is a way of converting it, but I don't know how to do that and I don't have that technology available to me. Um, but they are out there available to download illegally, um, which also brings me to the point I'm not going to post links to any IRs in this video because the ones I've downloaded, I'm not sure whether they were for distribution or not. Um, and I don't want to be putting something out there that's not supposed to be out there. So I'm going to try and talk and fly cam right here. I'm using the first two channels of my Scala 8920. I'm splitting the signal using this radial big shot ABY. One half goes into the atomic and into the interface, and the other half just goes into the other channel direct. It is possible to split the signal internally using the atomic which I'll talk about in just a second. You'll likely want to blend the original signal back in with the IR. The reason for that is whilst on a recording it sounds great, in a live environment or through a speaker, the IR can sound a little bit boomy and um, a little bit thin sounding. I found myself dialing out the boom of the IR and then blending back in the other saddle pickup to add some weight to the sound. Uh, when using an acoustic IR, you'll likely turn off the internal amp and effects. If you do that, the switch on the face of the unit can be used to assign just the IR to either the XLR or the jack, leaving one as a bypass. Bear in mind that when, when you bypass the, uh, the amp and effects section, the knobs on the face of the unit will no longer function, other than the, uh, the level knob, which will act kind of like a, a passive volume in that all the way up is about equal to the input signal. Um, you could lie to the sound man if you wanted some extra headroom and tell him that your maximum signal was halfway up and that way you could turn it up after his set your level. You'll have to blend the two signals together and EQ your sound using an external mixer. Personally I'm sub-mixing myself uh, with a little Allen Heath Z10 effects um, and then sending that signal to the front of house. This allows me to blend it and EQ it to my taste. I'm finding with a speaker it's probably around about a 60-40 blend between IR and uh, undersaddle. On the recording you heard, it's more about 80-20. I've only put a tiny bit of the undersaddle in. So I'm going to give you a little comparison now between the IR and the undersaddle pickup just dry straight into the interface. It'll be a little section of what you've just heard, but isolated from the mix. Tiny bit of the lead and a tiny bit of the rhythm. I hope you found this video useful, interesting, informative, any of that kind of stuff. 
If you give me a like, share or subscribe, other people can find it too. Thanks for watching. Later.